This is Kenya's biggest conversation, the Situation Room, broadcasting on Spice FM for the next hour, one hour. We'll also be live on KTN Home. And the show is always live on spicefm.co.ke and spicefmke YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. As we begin this new hour, CT Muga, what is today's proverb? If a woman doesn't love you, she calls you brother. Why? <laughs> Breaking the hearts of people every morning. That is CT Muga. Wow. Mm. <laughs> That's a really interesting tag. I, I hadn't seen it that way. Yeah. So let me repeat it so that we can entrench that particular perspective. Oh if a woman doesn't love you, she calls you brother. Where is that problem from? Of course, it's African. What else could it possibly be? <laughs> <laughs> it's in very many communities in the African continent. It is. It mm. is. And it isn't quite... Various forms and variations. Yes, but... The All saying the same. Mm -hmm. She don't love you, you can tell. Yes, and uh, ballads have agreed. Mm -hmm. They have sung songs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Kabisa. So let's talk about chai. Nataka chai. Chai in the country is not now the, the chai of uh, police officers or the chai of uh, government officers or the chai that you give to people when you want them to uh, do something. Uh, for you not that chai not that chai yeah it's the chai that we actually take going to have every any homestead in the country and one of the things that you expect is that they are going to offer you tea and if they don't offer you tea then they'll call you brother <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow kenya exported over 360 million dollars worth of tea in 2019 alone this is against a global demand of 2.2 billion cups of tea every day. Just the other day when we had the London Marathon, the Kenyan government, in, uh, being led by the High Commission in London, was doing this campaign, understanding very well that the people in the UK are very, very big on tea, and saying much of the tea that you consume in this country comes from Kenya. Mm -hmm. So we have a product that we've exported over very many years that has a ready market all over the world. The, the, it's called now, it, it used to be called the Export Promotion Council, it's now called Kenya Branding and Export Promotion Agency or something like that, is even discussing with the market in China to expand the market for Kenya's black tea into that Chinese market because Chinese market, they're big consumers of tea, but not black tea. So how do we then uh, grow, get new markets? So there are all these efforts at, you know, expanding our market, making sure that our farmers in this country can then have a ready market all over the world. However, I am just going to look at, I've just typed on Google, T, Kenya, and gone under the tab, news. Mm -hmm. Listen to the headlines. Uh, KTDA urges calmers tea farmers threaten to boycott harvesting. This is two weeks ago. National Assembly finalizes report on tea sector findings. That's two weeks ago as well. Farmers and KTDA differ on proposed tea regulations. That's uh, four weeks ago. The real problems in the tea industry. That's three weeks ago. Kenya tea farmers to get lower bonuses. That's a month ago. High court paves way for KTDA managed factories to hold elections. This is something that's happening in the courts. That's two weeks ago. Key tea sector reforms to be released. Tea exports fall 14 million kilos in eight months. And this is the headline. About 13 hours ago, tea bonus falls to 27.6 billion shillings. Mm -hmm. Any of those that is a positive headline, I didn't, uh, I, I missed it. Please just remind me mm -hmm. which of them was anything positive unfortunately not unfortunately so we've gotten to a point where this even got the, the attention of the president himself and a couple of months ago when he was addressing these issues in mombasa he said look we have had issues in the tea sector and we deserve we uh, we need to have reforms <laughs> appointed a new cs for agriculture and said among the things that i want to see is you sorting out the mess in the tea sector but let me see, before the president spoke, had mm. s these same issues not been raised before by people in that sector? Oh, yes, they had. And they had been raised for a long time, I presume. Oh, yes, they had. Yes, so the president's understanding of the re resolution to this situation was appointing a new minister and asking him to attend to it. Mm. Take charge. Yes. But let me ask, mm. the problems that you have read out as they have been presented, 
does if we are to do the Kenyan thing and focus on blame, does the blame solely lie on the management of that tea sector? Or are there factors that are outside their control completely? Factors outside the control of the managers of the tea sector? Yes, anybody who is in the tea sector and in that position of management. Factors such as okay, factors, global warming, what else? No, no, not global, not even global warming. Okay. Factors such as yeah. Sri Lanka after 25 year uh, uh, um, uh, strife mm -hmm. comes back into the market because when they were fighting each other, uh, we had a fairly swell time with regards to our tea being bought by people who had probably previously bought from uh, Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. Okay, Then the vagaries of climate now comes in. right? So when you have these countries that previously... Let's just say, let me talk about one country. Sri Lanka. Yes, the production comes back. What do you think is going to happen? There'll be a glut. There'll be more tea mm -hmm. into the market. If there's more tea, are we saying that there's been a corresponding increase in the demand for tea? The truth is, anytime you have an increase in production, the cost of that particular item, base economics, tends to go down. Mm -hmm. So, are these factors being considered? Or is it just that we are going to focus on people who manage these things? I'm not saying there are no problems. I'm simply saying, have we considered other factors that may be outside the purview or the control of those who manage the tea sector? Mm -hmm. All right. Those who manage the tea sector also have a responsibility to market the product. So yes, there could be an increase in, in uh, the market because of a certain producer now coming back into the market. But how well had you positioned yourself in that period when Sri Lanka was fighting? In that period when you had a better position in the market, how well had you managed yourself? How well had you branded yourself? How well had you ensured that your product is then now considered the best that whatever happens, we shall be ready. So that even if Sri Lanka comes back into the market, or any other player now introduces themselves um, and starts growing tea, for example, which we've seen can also happen, mm. have you done it so well and packaged it so well that regardless of the fact that others would come in, they would still then be buyers or still, be, um, still have an affinity for your tea? Did you do the groundwork on, and make sure that you had backed it up so well that regardless of what happens moving, going forward, you would still be one to bank on? And I think that's what a solid marketing, powerful marketing mm. then would be about. We'll have this conversation and let's bring in now somebody who has been at the forefront in raising the issues of the tea sector. This is Irongo Nyakera. Irongo Nyakera was a former principal. He's a former principal secretary. He's currently the... De Deputy Party Leader of the Democratic Party. Irongo, thank you very much for joining us. Welcome to the Situation Room. Uh, good morning, uh, and uh, thank you very much for inviting me. Irongo, you are among the people who are very vocal, have been very vocal uh, in demanding reforms in the tea sector, in demanding a uh, new way of looking at things in the tea sector. Just paint for us the picture. What is it that you have issues with? Okay, actually, if I, if I just uh, first address the uh, question that have been raised uh, by uh, Bonamuga uh, with regard to the, the the market and the and whether it's the market dynamics that have changed and hence why the our team uh, is not earning what it ought to be earning, and um, it's true, of course, they, it's about uh, demand and supply. But in this case, we are also talking about uh, the supply of a very uh, premium uh, tea, which is from Kenya. Actually, most of the uh, global teas don't have the same uh, the, the level of uh, uh, the, 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 the are not in the same quality as the Kenyan tea. So, as the, you have more Kenyan tea uh, being produced, it means that the, the ones that will be suffering are the ones which are poor uh, qualities, because then the Kenyan tea will be actually demanded more, even for uh, things like uh, blending and the rest. What happens is, um, I think it's an issue of marketing, as has been mentioned. Uh, we, we have uh, concentrated on the traditional markets that we've always sold our teas uh, in. If you look at uh, right now, I think we sell about 60% uh, to Pakistan. Or, uh, and and, uh, and the, the percentages of the top five markets is about uh, 85%. Mm -hmm. So it means that any disturbance, Within those markets, and a lot of, and most of them actually have uh, had disturbances over the last few years, from Egypt so, uh, to Sudan uh, to Pakistan with their with, with, with their uh, currency. Uh, so, so if we do not diversify the market where we sell our teas, 
then the challenge is, is we always have this issue. In the uh, task force report, uh, which was for 2016, uh, marketing was identified as one of the issues that had to be resolved. Uh, and the uh, KTDA tasked to actually form a proper marketing team within itself. And uh, I was uh, asked the, uh, why aren't we looking at other African markets? Congo, for example, uh, Angola, uh, the U.S., uh, you're talking about the U.S. market uh, being a huge uh, market, but there's no Kenyan tea because apparently the kind of uh, tea that they require uh, in the U.S., you need to uh, grind it differently here. But there's probably an investment that can be done to be able to serve that market. Mm. So it's an issue of actually marketing, finding the, the uh, accepting that we won't only uh, uh, always serve these five markets, how can we also uh, broaden? So, um, they, so, so that's just one issue on the marketing. And this is an issue that has uh, elicited uh, a lot of uh, interest now because the T regulation uh, that uh, came into force on uh, 29th of June uh, this year actually cover a myriad of issues uh, from uh, issues of uh, ownership of factories to issues of marketing to issues of how farmers are paid and all the way to the issues of elections uh, within factories and uh, conflict of interest on directors, how many terms the directors can serve. So it's fairly broad. And actually that is what uh, we, we are looking at today because while it's something that is in the interest of farmers because that's what the president spoke on in January 14th when he actually uh, appointed the new minister in agriculture and tasked him to actually deliver what the farmers want, we have the other side, the other side, uh, which is uh, the KTDA, the, uh, the IATA, and the other actors within the t sector mm. who actually do not want to reform. They want things to go on as they've always done. Why would they insist on the status quo? Is it that they are satisfied with the benefits they derive from the status quo, or do they not see that if they change things that uh, there might actually be greater benefits? You see, the, the, the status quo is, is, is very easy for the for if, if someone is uh, knows how to navigate through the current system, any reforms or change is not exciting for them. Mm. And you'll find that uh, one of the things that's being addressed uh, is uh, on uh, on directors and the terms. Uh, currently, uh, a director, some of the directors who are KTBA, uh, like the chair, has been there for over 20 years in KTDA as a director. He's been there as a chair for over 10 years. So you find that, uh, and you go to a lot of these factories, there are directors who've been there for 20 plus years. So these are not people who are interested in uh, in reforms or change. That's why the regulations are coming in and saying that a director will serve for only a maximum of two terms of three years. So that you can have people who, are, who, are, who have a time limit on when they can actually be able to deliver. Uh, to 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 the people who elect them. Then there's also the issue of who actually elects these directors and who do they owe their allegiance to. Currently, at least, the directors are technically elected or appointed by KTDA through the, the system, the very opaque system of electing directors uh, from the point of, if I want to be director of Nyakera, I first have to go to KTDA managers for them to vet me yeah. and decide whether I, I qualify. Then once they agree, they have to be taken to the company secretary for KTDA to see whether I'm, I'm distracting them too much and whether they should pass me. And then once we go to the factory for the election, farmers don't even know how many shares they have to vote until the day of the election. That's when someone is told, today you have five shares, this one you have seven shares, this one has 200 shares. So that opaque system then brings in only the people who will sing to the tune of the KTD and the system that they have. And that is what has been removed by the regulations by saying that every single farmer will have one vote as per the members, the memorandum and articles of the factories, which give every farmer only five shares of ownership within the company. So once we resort, once we are able to resolve the issue of, of uh, the governance, the issues of, uh, uh, of the directors, and the issue of the leadership within the organization, that's the only way then that you'll be able to forge forward into uh, reforms. It sounds like the tea sector has a very uh, 
heavily regulated value chain. Just explain to us that value from the farmer to this monstrous organizations called the Kenya Tea Development Authority. How how are they linked, and who sells Kenya's tea to the market? Actually, it, 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 it's the opposite. Actually, the tea sector is not regulated. Um, so, so, so KTDA is a power into itself because nobody uh, questions it. Uh, when you go to to fight it uh, with the government, on the, from the government side, they come and say that they are government. Then the uh, the uh, government spokesman comes and speaks and defends them. Then when you go to fight them in court, they say they are a private company, and so so they, they are a power. What are they actually? What are they? A private company? They are actually a public limited company, right? But with uh, with public interest because they they represent six hundred and fifty thousand farmers. So a they are not they are, interest they are, company with private interests. It, yes, public limited company with public interest. Explain that to so us. It's a private company by that definition of the company act, but it is owned by 54 companies, uh, which uh, the, the, the 54 companies in the country, but representing 650,000 farmers. Mm. Is it voluntary? So, can, can tea farmers decide not to belong to this KTDA, or is it, uh, is it a requirement? No. You, you see, what, what KTDA is actually a management agent. And you see, it, it, it's all about uh, aggregation. Because when KTDA was formed, initially it was a government parastatal, uh, but then under the uh, 1999, uh, the, the parliamentary session paper two, it was actually converted into a, a, a public, a private company. Mm -hmm. Now, all uh, government uh, transferred its share, shareholding uh, from KTDA into, uh, the, in, in, into the, the factories. Uh, them, them. So, so these factories actually own us into KTD. But it's a question of and who's the agent and who's the principal. And who, who owns these factories? The factories are directly owned by farmers. So each of the farmers, have, like my factory uh, back in Moranga is uh, Kiru. It has 8,000 farmers. So in turn, then that factory then owns KTDA. So you're telling me that a management company has more power than those who actually own the company. You see, that's actually the issue. That's why we, we keep talking about who's the principal and who's the agent. Because KTD is an agent, but it acts like the principal. And the farmers are the, uh, the principals, but they're treated like the agent. And uh, <laughs> if, you, if you look like the case that uh, we just, uh, the farmers uh, went uh, on this regulation, and the, the, the KTD went to court and stopped the regulations. And uh, last week, the farmers, actually, last week, uh, the farmers uh, wrote to enjoin themselves in the case mm -hmm. and arguing that uh, the KTDA instructed their board of the factories uh, to enjoin in the case. But this board did not contact the farmers to ask them whether they want to enjoin in, the, in, 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 a, in a court case where they are fighting the regulations that are, are supposed to empower them. Mm. Yeah, so... So, so and, and of course, we are waiting for judgment, uh, the ruling on that on uh, November 26th uh, on this specific matter. But then that's the whole issue where the agent and the principal, uh, the, the one has assumed the role of the other uh, without giving the right <laughs> to, the, to, uh, uh, to the other one to know that they've been uh, subrogated to a lower position. Irongo, who is instituting these new regulations? Who? Um, and uh, under Schedule 5 mm -hmm. uh, of, uh, of, of uh, the Constitution, right. uh, Subsection 29, mm -hmm. uh, the, the mm -hmm. policy on agriculture uh, rests with the national government. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. anything that, and that's why you think that the, 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 it's the Ministry of Agriculture that came up with the, with, with the, the, the regulations, but it just didn't come up with them today. Mm -hmm. uh, the regulations, are, uh, the, the reforms process, Started in 2014 by the Ministry of Agriculture, went through the whole uh, the, the, uh, stakeholder engagement, stakeholder consultations, and all that, up, up to the point uh, where then uh, the, it was they were gazetted on June 29th. Uh, so, so, the, uh, and that's what you're seeing them doing within the other with the other subsectors. But yeah, but it rests uh, within the Ministry of Agriculture. Just. 
you know, listening to the structure of how the, the, the sector is organized, tea farmers take tea to a certain uh, tea factory where it's processed, then the tea farmers hold own that tea factory. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing, isn't it? I mean, if you just think about it from that point, is that it's collectively we are growing tea and we are taking tea to this factory that we own. Mm -hmm. And then uh, this factory um, owns, uh, all these factories own this agency, uh, agent, and we all collectively now take our tea and then this agent is supposed to do the job of, of marketing our tea and everything else. Sounds very, very good. So what's you, the problem? You ask yourself, so <laughs> at, at what point then does the one that is supposed to be your agent become your your boss mm. the one that's supposed to be working and serving you at what point do they do, do they become your boss because essentially what we're looking at is it, the authority then having been put in place would then be working for the farmers to make sure that this product that they're putting out there then goes ahead and is, is sold is marketed properly and everything as opposed to them uh, what we are seeing now lording this authority over you and then making the demands and dictates and then as per what you're supposed to do it should actually be the other way around because you are the ones essentially with the gold product but remember the directorate the directorate of the ktda is actually derived from the membership itself mm. is that not so irongo it is the directors of the tea factories then that go and elect the directors of KTDA. And for you to be a director in KTDA, you must have been, uh, you must be a director of a tea factory. Is that not That's the case? correct. So That's at what correct. point then do those people go up there and they become the boss of the, the people that have sent them up there? You see, one is that it's not the people who sent them up there. You see, that's the issue. Mm. Because the, 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 the system of election is that they, 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 they've been sent there by the, the same system and not the farmers. Because as I was giving an example, if I want to run to become a director of the factory, I don't even think I will get to the ballot because I'll have been eliminated by KTDA way before uh, because they'll be like, this guy will cause trouble. So they only put the people who they want. All right. And then so what you're saying is, just <coughs> so, so, so we see whether you can understand, if you want to be a director of Kero Tea Factory in Moranga, yes. you first have to go to KTDA to be vetted and to be cleared yes. at the national level for you to be a director at the local level. Yes. What's you the first logical? Cleared, they, they've created what they call the vetting, uh, a vetting team committee regional. So you first have to go to be cleared by that vetting committee regional. Uh, for and that's where they ask for good conduct. They ask for the CV. They ask for what value it takes to the board. Does the farmer have any any role in in the activities you're talking about? No. And the how did this come about that the farmer came to a point where he has no say in the management of his affairs? Because what happened is KTDA created uh, in the in creating the management agency with the farmers. Uh, money to sneak in that they're the ones who run and conduct the election of the factory. So, so as part of their agreement with the farmer on how they will manage the factory as a management agent. And that's where all those issues were. So Gera, issue I'd, li I'd like to ask, because this is something I'd like to understand, just walk us through. From the time tea is produced, the process it goes through the point where it's taken overseas, how does this happen? Because I want to understand who plays what role where. Yeah. So, um, so the farmer picks the tea. Uh, most of them are there by six o'clock. It's raining and all that. Yeah. And uh, they, they they take the tea to the tea buying center, uh, where then the KTDA has hired the clerks who who are the ones now who who ensure that the tea is uh, bought and collected and taken to the factory. At the factory, that's essentially that's where they, it ends with the farmer the farmer does not know what happened to their tea after that so once it goes to the factory uh it, it uh it's dried it's processed and then uh the transporters again uh who who you find that most of the directors are the ones who carry out the transport business that's the conflict of interest that's addressed in the regulations uh now take the tea and transport it to the mombasa warehouses and at the mombasa warehouses that's where the tea it's either sold uh, by auction 
at uh, the East Africa t uh, auction, uh, T T T Trade uh, Authority uh, Agency, the e IATA, uh, or the other that is not sold through auction is sold through what we call the direct sale, which have been uh, which have been removed and made illegal by the regulation. Mm -hmm. So at the auction, uh, we have the different memberships at the auction who are the buyers, and they are the ones who come in and to buy uh, and should they not buy a certain tea that you know, goes and is sold, uh, is taken out of auction and is sold by direct sale. And you find that the terms of the direct sale are very punitive sometimes because in terms of payment terms, some of the people pay within six months, they're given crazy credit. Uh, in terms of pricing, uh, we saw like in the month of August, uh, in just one uh, sale of about a thousand containers where uh, you look at the auction price versus the prices that was sold on direct sales and we had lost about 165 million shillings from just one, one sale of a thousand containers uh, so so that's why you, the, the uh, and the, the sale at the auction is by the brokers uh the brokers who have been appointed by the factory so what you find uh, the regulations are doing are trying to streamline uh the the entire uh the, the process of uh, how the tea moves from the farmer uh, all the way to the auction, reducing the cost that uh, the, 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 the farmer is bearing uh, and ensuring that uh, the, the, the loopholes that are there for pr uh, price manipulation uh, uh, at, the, at the auction and also on uh, even issues of theft uh, are taken care of. Mm. Who carries out these auctions? Who carries out the auctions? Auction. Because auctions essentially will determine um, how much this will be sold for, whether it's on the international market and then whatever is left thereafter. That's so who then is in charge of these auction sales? The auction sales, so for, for the factory, the factory appoints two brokers. So each factory has two brokers who represent and make the sales on their behalf. And uh, what uh, the, the, the regulations require is actually for these uh, auctions to be automated, and uh, because and also for the factories to have their own representatives over and above uh, the the auction, the brokers and the factories to be members mm -hmm. of this uh, of the auction house. So that way, it is very clear because the issue is on this KTD and the T sector is about opaque systems, opaque structures, and lack of transparency in a lot of areas that, uh, that we require as farmers and others to know uh, and to even suggest improvement if, if you see it. Uh, and that's what is being protected by those within the system and their cartels to ensure that the status quo is what remains and everything remains as unclear as possible. Let, I am, I, again, from a point of ignorance, there are tea companies in this uh, country that we, you could consider private. One thinks of Brook Bond, one thinks of Finlay's. Uh, what is their relationship with KTDA, if there is any? There is not. There is no relation. It's just that even them sometimes they buy KTDA tea, uh, Unilever, your Finlay's, and the others, and they use it to even blend their tea. Um, uh, they, so, so even them, as per the requirements, that will that all their sales will also go through the auction. You see, the auction, the idea is actually to to be able to achieve uh the the, the real price mm. uh instead of having a fictitious price mm. and also even for from a tax perspective to be able to get the right uh volumes and sales that are being made by even these big companies who whose sale is about 35 percent of the tea ktda controls about 50, uh, 65 percent of uh the tea sales of the country and uh, so 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 actually the requirement is that all the tea uh from the private uh companies the KTD teas all are supposed to go through auction. So if you look at the teas that are sold by the private companies and you look at the total uh, sales and you look at that of KTDA, would you say that comparatively the private companies seem to do better with their sales than KTDA? You see, for, for this, if you, if you use the direct sales, KTDA is always able to say that they've achieved higher prices than the private companies. But you see, the private companies are selling to their their own offshore.
And for purposes of transfer pricing and taxation, they'll always sell at a lower price. They'll never want to sell at a higher price mm -hmm. and pay higher taxes. Mm. So in terms of uh, the price uh, the KTDA uh, compares with and saying that they, they've sold at a higher margin of price that's higher than the, uh, the private company, is not the case. This mm. company sells to the top. Okay. Now, with these problems, even as we're looking at them, we've not discussed all the problems that, you know, are being faced right now in the tea sector. But as we in, as this regulation has been introduced, is this now the one-fits-all-size solution to the problems that have dogged the sector, the new regulations that are being introduced? Is that the answer? The, the regulations cover part of it, uh, but then we have, we have the tea bill. So the regulations that the T bill are coming in at the different times, um, the, the the regulations are on the back of the existing crop act, but the T bill comes in and to put in a, a completely new act uh, and brings back things like uh, the T T board, uh, which was uh, eliminated or removed when uh, when KTDA became a public a, a private company. It uh, comes in and uh, to bring uh, T research. Uh, institute, which again was taken out and taken to Calro, uh, because you see, the, the, you, you, if you look at the pricing, how much uh, you, we are paying, you find that a tea, a tea factory like Ngere in Moranga was paid the highest uh, price in bonuses of 30 shillings, and you find that uh, a factory in Kisi is getting eight, nine shillings. So, you see, it, it's also an issue of research, ensuring that uh, we have customized. Uh, the fertilizers, customized uh, training uh, on what are they to how the pro, uh, pro crop production is to be done. So again, uh, that tea research uh, is, has been brought uh, out of Calro and back to take it to the within the alpha within the the tea board and a few other things. So the tea regulations is just uh, a small uh, covers a small section, mm -hmm. and the tea bill is fairly broad because then it brings in all the different. Uh, the uh, regulatory framework mm. that is required to see the uh, drive as a factor. Does KTDA have any role in any pre-harvest activity within the tea sector? Uh, KTDA, uh, because of the uh, economies of scale, is the one that then does uh, pro, uh, the, the extension services, uh, helping in setting up of the nurseries uh, for farmers to be able to buy uh, the tea, in terms of providing farmers with the fertilizers, which, uh, as you are saying, they just give the farmers the same fertilizer from from uh, uh, Canadi all the way to Kisi, and instead of actually having customized fertilizers for mm. their soil. Mm. So you find that some of the soils have become too acidic, and the production is not the same as it ought to be. So that's why the tea research uh, becomes very important, and where now they're supposed to be customizing even if it's the fertilizer. So yeah, they do play a significant role and that's really part of the management argument and that's why they are paid a fee. If we, if we leave Kenya briefly and just talk about the exports, I was, when I was looking into the tea sector, something puzzled me. Among some of the top exporters of tea, uh, like Poland, Germany, UAE and UK, I wondered, they don't feature... In, as being producers or huge producers of tea, how then do they turn out to be huge exporters as well? You see, that, that's actually what's covered. If you look at the tax force report of the 2016 and 2007, one of the biggest areas uh, that uh, we are looking at to be able to increase the value of tea and the, uh, the price that the farmer gets is value addition. Today, the farmer gets 16% of the ultimate price of tea that's sold in the UK. Uh, so the other 84% goes to the value chain, uh, to the, 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 the middlemen and everyone else all the way to, to, to what the farmer gets. And you find some of, uh, one of the things that has been pushed for and has never been put is something like a common, uh, a common uh, user blending facility that then is able to add value for all the small uh, factories as well as the, 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 the individuals who are uh, doing the, the, the sales uh, who, who are doing the packaging within the country and exporting. So you find the countries like Poland and the others, what they do is they import a lot of these from the different countries, uh, do the blending, uh, package it, market it, and sell it at even higher premium than what we sold uh, to them. And that's what we've been unable to do. Uh, the, the, the regulations, are what have they come and said is that now 40% uh, of the teas that are sold out of, out of this country 
need to go out as uh, as value added uh, as a has given <laughs> yes finished product and has given them a, a five years if you look at the story of ketepa where ketepa started and how ketepa works and how ketepa drives after when ketepa died ketepa was doing exactly the same it was taking a certain percentage of tea from each factory including the 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 ones the wazungu factories and uh blending it uh value adding it final produce selling it and then the higher price that they get they send them back to the factory mm -hmm. and that's something that can be done and can be replicated sri lanka does it 55 uh, 65 percent of the teas out of sri lanka are value added mm -hmm. for kenya two percent is value added what i'm trying so to understand can... uh, irungo is why then it was it, it, it had to wait for kind this kind of regulation to come and change the way uh, this kind of business was being done what it is obviously glaring that uh, there was a problem when it came to the profits that could possibly be made from tea in the country, when it's clear that farmers are not being paid as much as they should be paid for their product, whether in its raw form or otherwise. So then to have to wait for this kind of regulation to basically enforce this kind of change, then I'm a bit weary about that as well. Because then what's to, what's to, to ensure that the regulation is going to bring about these things that we're looking at that need to happen what what how what how are you sure that the regulation coming in will make sure that these things happen if after all these years all these years it's never been done never been thought of never been executed okay maybe it's been thought of but it's never been executed this regulation coming in where you have things down on paper and say go ahead and do this what kind of surety do you have that it'll happen you see, the, the issue uh, has always been, I, th I think KTDA uh, went into the attitude of it's not my business, yeah. Uh, they, 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 were, they kind of confused the role of supplying the world with tea as being their main role, as opposed to the role where they were created, which is to aggregate small farmers and give them an income. And uh, these regulations, the requirements within that are the ones that will force uh, them to actually rethink the same because within five years then 40 percent of our tea will have to go out uh, value added so it's not a question of uh, what uh, wh whether they will do it or not but it will be a requirement and that they will not be allowed to sell more than that so in, immediately after this regulation coming they need to start putting up the process uh, the 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 the, the, uh, the instruments within uh, to ensure that by that time uh, we are that 40 percent and uh, all, all these other things that i was talking about the biggest issue at ktd is governance uh, and where the people who are at the top do not represent and are not connected at all uh, to the to the ground and to the uh, uh, and to the farmers at the grassroots and that is the issue that is being addressed by how do we elect directors how long do these directors stay who are these uh, directors accountable to? And uh, also limiting KTDA to actually just do what they're supposed to be doing. Uh, and marketing is one of the main things. KTDA has eight uh, subsidiaries, all doing the different things. They own banks. They do all this lending, their, their Shylocks. You see, they, 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 they've uh, expanded their business to so many different things mm. and stopped focusing on the one thing that they were supposed to be doing, which is marketing tea. Uh, when uh, the chairman the other day was talking and they were saying that the reason why they, they are not able to market Kenyan tea, as you, you are saying, is because they don't, government is not giving them a budget to do that. Uh, but they are happy spending 200, 300, 400 million on lawyers to fight cases on, on farmers' rights, <laughs> as opposed to using that money to go market our tea. So I think it's, a, it's an issue of just having a leadership at KTDA that cares about the interests of the farmers. As I and the regulators are institutionalizing that. As I listen to you and I, I look at um, the highlights of the regulations, one thing that's coming to mind is political goodwill versus lip service. And just looking back and wondering, so where did the rain start beating us? It's clear that... Um, there were people who wanted to come and benefit from the confusion and they entrenched that confusion and such personalities for them to thrive for that long they must have political patronage so they are the same ones who are the advisors to the senior leadership of 
the country at whatever point. So is there political goodwill to then see them start to suffer? You know, I, I don't, I, that's a really hard uh, question to, to answer because, you see, they, they, we, are, we are reading so, it, from so many uh, different uh, layers. Because on 14th of January, the president uh, made uh, the statement, talked about the issues of tea and said that he wants them resolved and appointed the minister to ensure that the minister uh, does uh, get that done. Uh, when uh, the issues have come up and KTDA has uh, the regulations were were, were gazetted, uh, we've had uh, the KTDA and the ATA have been to court on everything: election of directors, the regulations themselves, the T bill, the the committee that was created, which I'm a member of, the National Tea Steering Committee, and the office of the Attorney General uh, has not been any interested in actually getting uh, a, a legal representation mm. that supports mm. the ministry's uh, uh, the fight on this regulation. And that's why the judiciary, uh, the, the, all the cases that are going to court, we are getting injunctions, we are getting uh, stop orders, we are getting everything. There is nothing that goes in the interest of government. But we've seen areas where government is interested in even the judiciary is able to to realize that and do what's right, but in the in this case of the the T, uh, nothing seems to be going through the judiciary. So it begs the question of, is it really a government priority or is there political goodwill on it? It's I I I, I don't I, I really don't know and I doubt there is. If you th think back about it and you look at you know who would benefit from such uh, political leaders understand their voters and they understand their voters are farmers and they understand therefore that their farmers um, well-being would keep them happy and keep electing them but on the other hand if the same people are involved in that business on a private basis if they are the ones who are the middlemen if they're the ones who are benefiting from everything else uh, if you think about any large-scale tea farmer who would not be a member of a tea factory or who would be able to manipulate a tea factory having you know a tea plantation somewhere in Muranga County or along the Abadeas, such such people who then are the ones who are benefiting from a rough system, wouldn't be it be better if people like you who are campaigning went ahead and maybe commissioned a proper investigation so that you came out and said this is where the problem is and these are the individuals who benefit from this and if we blow them out of the water then you'd be able to address the issue one, once and for all you know in this country that doesn't seem to work uh because you know we wrote to the dci and said that uh there's all these ills that are going on at ktda ktda were called they were asked a lot of questions and uh when they were not able to respond they went to court and court issued an injunction stopping the DCA from investigating KTDA. And uh, so so now the DCA, even we can stop the DCA from investigating issues of fraud and criminal activity. Mm. And then it came to light that uh, the chairman and uh, another, and, and, uh, and uh, George Mooho are, are also brokers uh, part in partnership, which is in contravention of uh, the all the rules of being a, a chairman of uh, the board and you're also doing business with the organization and that story was also swept under the carpet and nothing happened so uh, that that's what i'm saying is at the end of the day some of the politics if you look at the the governors the governors went to court to stop regulation not because of the regulations are bad but they're just saying that nobody consulted them mm -hmm. you see and Yes, it is affecting the farmers. And I was telling them, according to the Schedule 5, uh, the, uh, the agriculture policy is not devolved. It's with government. So it's not the counties to make the decisions. Otherwise, we'd have 50 in 17 counties. 17 counties will have different regulations on how tea should be harvested, uh, sold, and all that. So it can't work. That's why it was not devolved. And uh, so you ask then, if a governor comes from a tea growing area and he knows that his farmers, the people who actually put him in, will benefit from this regulation, why would he go and actually call a press conference and say, 
we do not support hmm. tea reform. So who are they speaking for? Yeah. So it's it, it's really a, a, a case where the farmer is left on their own, and it's really only political goodwill that will come to actually save them. I almost hear you saying that there is then a group of people, call it a cartel if you like, then who are really running things here. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. And, 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 and that's why we've been saying, that if you look at KTD alone, the CEO has been there for over 20 years. He got an, an additional three years. Uh, and when he was being asked, what will you do for KTD over, over the next three years? He said, I've done everything that I need to do. Uh, the company secretary, who is also the one who runs uh, by virtue of the management agreement, and he runs them like his own kiosk, has been there for eight, 22 years. Mm. The chairman mm. has been there as, as a director within KTDA for 26 years. So these people, there's nothing that can move them. You see, they, they know all the system. They've made a lot of money. They, they don't... There is not a care of that it's a farmer trying the bonus this year is low or next year we have not we don't see things improving. Mm. That's why the CEO just went on TV and told them, if you feel that you you're not getting value for your tea farm, you can uproot the your tea. Yeah, because he doesn't feel like he needs to waste time trying to address their issues. Yeah. Irongo, thank you very much for speaking to us. And I've asked, I must issue a disclaimer. You've mentioned some names and personalities and uh, uh, made some allegations. Those are views that are expressed by Irongo Nyakera, not necessarily views held by the Situation Room. But Irongo, another final challenge as we conclude this conversation is those of you that are campaigning for these reforms in this sector and you feel that there are um, forces that are fighting these reforms, maybe go back into going to court with actual allegations against personalities and say this is what we've found out and this would like this person to respond on specific allegations they have uh, done this 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 and the other which goes contrary to the spirit of the the farmers movement it goes contrary to laws of kenya and such so that you then you have a case to present yes absolutely actually the case that was had uh, on tuesday this week on Wednesday this week uh, was where the farmers were enjoining themselves into the main uh, suit mm -hmm. on the regulation. Actually made clear why all these issues of conflict, the farmers' interest, and uh, the benefit that will accrue to the farmer uh, should these regulations pass need to be uh, listened and addressed. Of course, they were uh, fought uh, very, very vigorously by the lawyers from KTDA, uh, but. We are waiting to hear, to see what the court says uh, on 26th of November. But the interest, uh, but, uh, as you're saying, there are certain uh, people who benefit, very few people who benefit uh, from this uh, current system and structures, uh, as opposed to the 650,000 who would actually benefit from the implementation of these regulations and also from the TB. From the TB side, I've uh, talked to the, the members of parliament, actually they're just finalizing the report, they in a retreat, and it seems that from their side, they actually understand and appreciate the issues and challenges the farmers are going through, and they seem very keen to actually make it, make bring change through passing of the uh, TBO. Thank you very much, Irongo. Have a good day, and we wish you all the best. Asante for speaking to us. Uh, thank you so much uh, for the situation. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you, sir.